I think there are two possibilities. First, we have a lot of sanatorium centers in Poland. And it must be involved, of course, the Minister of Health because it's uh, no charge of them. And the second, what I have uh, contact with Ukrainian doctors, they said they, they wanted to, to, to keep back these patients after acute uh, treatment at the hospital, back to the Ukraine to the western part of green. I think we must also take into the measure, into con consideration, this point of view of Ukrainian government. Okay, well, thank you very much. Uh, we are alive now, so we are being recorded. And uh, welcome to the panel on overcoming the Ukrainian hu humanitarian crisis. And uh, we have uh, four speakers right now, and two are still missing. <laughs> Uh, we are missing Dr. Shai Misan, who is a psychiatrist, also YPO and entrepreneur, who was uh, very much helping with the mission of Hadassah, bringing Hadassah to Poland. But we have uh, the CEO of Hadassah with us, Jorge, Jorge Diner, who is going to tell us about his effort, about his experience, etc. We have do uh, Professor Piotr Waciński, who was also involved with Hadassah, who is working with the Lublin uh, University Hospital. And uh, the, the, the two together launched something which is already known in the international medical community as the Lublin model, a cooperation of uh, international organization with a local hospital. And we have uh, Tomasz Miszak, Tomasz, entrepreneur from Poland, launched several uh, well-known companies uh, with a great success, but recently also as a deputy chair of the uh, employer's organization, he uh, helped to raise, and he actually was the spiritus movens of the effort, 65 million euros in a very short period of time to help Ukrainian and Ukrainian refugees. So welcome to the panel. And I wanted to ask uh, Jorge, first, if you don't mind, uh, tell us about your experience. And uh, I would appreciate if all of you not only could not only look at the Ukrainian situation, but also at a broader picture, because this is not the first and not the last humanitarian crisis is not unfortunately and I, I want to say I wish we didn't have this panel but unfortunately we do so, uh, so Jorge what is your reflection your experience tell us about Hadassah coming to Poland uh... thank you thank you Alex and um, first of all uh, you know it's interesting to have this uh, conversation with, uh, with with people I have been working with and have become close to uh, thanks, we can say, or because of this uh, crisis. Uh, and I think that's a reflection of what I call the positive side of this tragedy, of, the, of this global human tragedy, and is that uh, people like us can come together. And, you know, it's, for me, it's interesting, you know, when I was thinking about uh, uh, speaking at this event, I think, okay, is this time that we get conclusions? And it's kind of difficult because this is, not, this is an ongoing event. It's an ongoing event that is as unpredictable as it was two months ago, where it will take us. And then everything that we can uh, uh, learn so far are some lessons from how we have done things and how we can look at, uh, at the future moving, moving forward. Um, I think, uh, and I speak in a minute about what the DASA has done and how we can, came to the picture in, uh, in the middle of this humanitarian crisis. But I think, you know, the main challenge, the way I see is how we move from what uh, was at the very beginning an emergency response to a humanitarian crisis of extraordinary proportions. Uh, how we transform that emergency spirit of, you know, all uh, uh, those who wanted to help getting on board and doing whatever we can and trying to build relationships very quickly so that we can maximize the impact of what we do. How we move from that immediate response to a sustainable model of support because nobody knows at this point, even you know the more optimistic ones, uh, nobody knows how long this humanitarian crisis can take us. Will it be an hour months? Will it be six months? Will it be a, a, a number of years? Nobody knows what is the dimension of the crisis we see. So I think that you know one of the things that uh, I, I'm very uh, proud of when again when I look at this uh, at the screen and who we are here, I see partners and friends that have worked together directly or indirectly during the last couple of, uh, almost three months. And we at ADASA, and those who don't know, ADASA is a humanitarian organization with global reach and impact that is basically was created by a, a group in the United States, the ADASA Women Science Organization of America, over 100 years ago. But its main really 
a hub and center now is in Jerusalem with our hospitals that uh, are considered one of the leading hospitals in the Middle East and probably in some areas around the world. And the first decision we made, like many others, at the beginning of this crisis was to say, we need to find some way to, uh, to help. Um, and, uh, and one of the things that I think is interesting for our discussion, and again, how we overcome this humanitarian crisis or what we learn to move moving forward, is that we understood that uh, it doesn't matter how much expertise we have in other catastrophes and how much we know what we think should be done. The only way to move forward is to understand the needs on the ground and getting into Poland to look for partnerships. Partnership with donors, some of them are here. Partnership with institutions, some of them are here. Uh, some of our leadership at Adassa, like uh, Dr. Shai Mishan, who is, all, Mishan, who is also part of our leadership. And I think uh, uh, basically, as we were able to bring uh, up to today, we have the 11th delegation, number 11 of, of uh, medical personnel from Jerusalem in, uh, at the uh, Polish border in Przemysl. And we were in Korczowa and working in Medica. And that area I mentioned before, Alex, uh, with almost over 80 people who were uh, 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 professionals, health professionals that have been or they are right now. Uh, at this point, also over 100, if we count our partners from the uh, from the Medical University Hospital in, in Lublin, and uh, uh, Dr. Basinski will, will talk about that too. Uh, I believe that one of the lessons that, uh, uh, that I learned from this is that there is so much potential in trying to organize even better the chaos and complexity of so many factors trying to come together to help and to assist. What I call, you know, the, the, the four P's, PPPP, which is the public-private philanthropic partnerships. When people that are ready to bring the necessary resources to make something happen, working together with the public, in this case, the Polish government, and it's different uh, uh, branches, you know, it's the Red Polish Cross, or if the paramedics, the local authorities that have really created some kind of de facto partnership. It's not, uh, there are no papers that were signed on these partnerships. But I believe that this coalition of public, private, uh, philanthropic uh, foundations working together is the key to, uh, to look at how we move to the next stage of the humanitarian crisis. But probably also, once this is over, it's also something we need to keep developing as we want to build a better world. I think that, that this is the kind of uh, main takeaway from uh, the incredible work that has been done by all these partners dealing with humanitarian crisis, in this case, specifically in Poland. Przemku, we don't hear you. We don't hear you, Przemek. No. We can't, no. We can't hear you. We can't hear you. Okay, maybe Przemek this time will yes. uh, just work on, on, on his device and I will just try to uh, uh, say what I have experienced during this uh, time. And uh, from my point of view, uh, as Przemek mentioned, I started the, the group on the social media, uh, which had been at the end uh, collected at more than 65 million euro, uh, mostly in a financial, which was around uh, 60 million or so 50 million euro, and Uh, the uh, offer of uh, goods and uh, services from logistic to food to housing uh, from all of our companies involved. And uh, from my point of view, the lesson I took, uh, first of all, is uh, the, the, the power of the current uh, social media project and how people can organize themselves. Uh, I was reading about this uh, many times, especially during the Arabic uh, uh, time mm. and uh, action, and uh, I, I wasn't sure how the people were able to organize themselves. But it really started from the, the five people I organized on my WhatsApp uh, group, and uh, they were the right people because they were the big entrepreneurs, and we started to invite uh, more of them. Currently, it's more than 240 people. Just we are not adding more people because WhatsApp has 256. This is the new notice to, to change because if you want to organize for sure, it will be better. 
And then it started to be the, the group where more than 200 biggest Polish entrepreneurs have founded themselves as the people who are involved in this action. And we started to code it. We started to send the needed stuff from uh, beds, uh, covers, uh, food, uh, transport, uh, security uh, into the, the place where they needed. And, uh, all of you have seen in Przemysl, in uh, Helm, all of the reception center has been started by entrepreneurs. It was not built by the local government. It was not built by the uh, Polish government. Uh, we have built it. We have um, fully equipped it and we uh, now give it for the management uh, of these authorities and the um, uh, international humanitarian organization. So the very important takeaway, I think that uh, we forgot that the crisis can be in Europe. And on the Europe level, we should have think about something like a, a quick reaction uh, power, uh, which can be compared to NATO. Like NATO has this quick reaction uh, military power, but we don't have this quick reaction uh, humanitarian power. And uh, thanks to the citizens of Poland, to the very positive reaction of the private people, entrepreneurs, we didn't face really absolutely the biggest crisis in Europe because it was a winter. People would be staying on streets, um, uh, probably dying out of the cold. Uh, so that helped that people took them to the houses. They have showed them uh, hearts, uh, really uh, showed that it is very important to be able to organize such thing. Maybe it can be even pre-organized. Sometimes the government can ask people who is ready, and then we'll have the addresses, and we'll be have, having the budget for uh, such help. And we have to remember that the crisis is not finished. Every day in our in the centers, we, we, we see uh, people coming from uh, Ukraine. Maybe not in a such number like we had at the beginning, but still, this is the uh, big number. And uh, the possibility of uh, the future crisis, I think, is increasing because we still don't know what if Ukraine will start to use the weapon which NATO uh, have supported them and what if the war start for the beginning on a different scale, on the both sides of a very offensive weapon, which for sure will be dangerous for civilians, so that the civilians will, will come uh, to Poland. Uh, and we have to speak for the future how we deal with all of these uh, refugees in, in, in Europe. Poland, for sure, for a long time, cannot have more than 2 million people. Currently, we have more than 2 million people. You are speaking about housing. Uh, probably the professor will say more about the health care system. Uh, we are speaking about uh, schools, about kindergartens. Everything of that, on a short notice, it's, it's not an issue. We can be more crowded. So we can wait a little bit on the line. But to not allow uh, in future to play on the uh, nationalistic level, even by Russia, which probably could be interested to build the contract between nations, the conflict, we, we, we should speak the, on a European level uh, how we deal with it, how we can help with all of these the points. Uh, for example, we must change uh, legal status in Poland uh, for, for housing, and it started already. So... This is, I think, not finished, and I believe the, on this panel and on this conference, the, many of words have been uh, uh, should be taken to, to change uh, our system. Still not, we don't hear you. Still not hear you. Okay. Do you do you hear me, by the way? Yes, yes, yes. yes. So I think I think you are uh, Piotr or Shai, I think would yeah, okay. 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 Yes, so, Piotr, uh, so I, I can go by by um, by presenting the fact that uh, beyond uh, the excitement of being here all together after we met on the ground with uh, with uh, Piotr with Alex and and with uh, Jorge uh, these were very very important and impacting days um, I'm indeed part of the leadership of, uh, of uh, Hadassah and cannot be more proud. And uh, furthermore, I'm the chairman of uh, YPO Europe. YPO is uh, one of the premier uh, leadership organizations in the world. We are gathering more than 33,000 uh, members uh, in the world today. And, and the consolidation of our companies is more than 9 trillion. And as such, uh, we definitely uh, are praised to have a lot of... Uh, a lot of access uh, during this uh, during this period we had several members uh, participating and helping uh, with with the uh, i would say today if i need to estimate with uh, over 50 million dollars of uh, 
of goods and services and transportation uh, and, and really reach all over. Uh, nevertheless, one of the learnings that I have is that uh, prospective is very impactful. What you see from Europe is not what you see from Asia and definitely not what you see uh, from the United States. And in a way, um, uh, I would love to see how we can, in, in uh, you know, future cases, uh, make the sound of a crisis like this clearer and, and more efficient. So also those who are not as close geographically uh, can be involved and help. We have seen several times how a lot of people hearing just from news or, or social media were there asking themselves, how can they help? So uh, definitely if there is a learning uh, out, of this, uh, uh, out of this crisis, is in a way how to have a playbook that uh, helps all the entities. And, and uh, going back to the point of Jorge, I love the concept of the PPP because uh, if you have a playbook that uh, shows that uh, kind of connection, then uh, entities like us can be even more efficient than what they are today in terms of, uh, in terms of access. Another very important element is that we have decided to focus on the things we can do rather than on the things we wish we could do. Um, sometimes um, the requests were coming that were more kind of political rather than actually pragmatical and humanitarian. And while we are all aligned with the, with the empathy towards suffering, we are not prime ministers. We are not governments, right? We are humanitarians and, and we are trying to do uh, everything we can in order to help. I'm proud to say that um, I think 20% of our members today are hosting uh, hosting uh, in Europe uh, families. Uh, houses, second or third houses, are uh, hosting today uh, families from the Ukraine. And uh, I must say that that by itself is an experience of growth to the families when I speak with them, um, for both, actually, for the Ukrainians and, uh, and the Italians or the Spanish or the, um, or the Polish and so forth. So uh, that's some of uh, our take home. Okay, we don't hear you. Alex, okay. you don't hear, maybe you could try to put in and out the plug from the. Yeah. Um... Okay. Okay. Uh, Shai, can I uh, can I start my talk? Uh, thank yeah. you very much for uh, for invitation for very exciting uh, uh, panel and meeting. Uh, of course, I'm totally agree with Jorge uh, with this PPP uh, system, but uh, I just uh, underline that we have started our collaboration after several two weeks of, 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 of discussion and meetings, it was very quick start. Because uh, if you want to start with governmental access, it will be not started yet, uh, I think. And it's a very crucial. I think uh, for a part of medical uh, services, it's very important uh, in face of an of a emerging wave of refugees because a part of housing, there is a lot of problems uh, with uh, these uh, refugees, starting from uh, mental status and uh, minor uh, health problems until to the very, very big problems as we have faced it in the last uh, few uh, few weeks, few months already, <laughs> as Hor has said. And our team, joint team and the Lublin model team is collaborate very, very hard. Uh, it's a joint Polish-Israeli team. And as Ho has said, it is a lot of people involved. We are working in a, a, a weekly basis, let's say, we're changing the, the, the groups and uh, operating uh, from, from Rzeszów and to, 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 to Przemysl, Korszowa and Medica sites. And uh, Lublin, it's uh, when i leading a, a, um, as chief of department in the cardiology, it's probably not uh, directly involved, but we have uh, a reference center for eastern part of Poland. And when we have faced a problem with a big problem with, uh, with the patients from Ukraine, we can serve and help them very quickly. And we have a lot of patients there from uh, this program. Otherwise, we, uh, we must thinking about the future. And I think that our model, Lublin model, is very good to start, very quick start, to help the people. Why? Because it, you can count the starting of operation 
in two, three months, uh, three weeks. It's very quickly. The problem from, uh, for foraging uh, um, help is uh, especially in the medical science. It's a problem of licensing and problem to access of uh, other doctors from, uh, from other countries. When we are faced uh, with the doctors, we are working with the doctors from Europe. There is not a big problem because we have a uh, uh, equalization of our diploma, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But uh, unfortunately, uh, our Israel partners are not yet uh, a partner, <laughs> be a part of EU. But we have find a solution for them and for other doctors uh, to be employed less, uh, like our consultants with our hospitals. And we must working together in this uh, uh, situation. Uh, legally, it's it's a very good. And of course, there is also an enormous uh, interest uh, to, to learn together. Why? Because, mm -hmm. uh, for example, Hadassah has a very, very big uh, experience to help the people abroad and to, uh, to have also from Hadassah Hospital of Jerusalem to have in emergency medicine where we really the top level uh, specialists. And for other side, we have also our expertise and uh, Jorge, Shai, and other people, Hadassah, as well as Alex, have been in, uh, in our hospital, uh, which is very well equipped and we have uh, well, uh, very well uh, trained staff. I think it's a model, a project model of collaboration between uh, two, uh, two centers and two, two, two nations, two companies, that it's very, very uh, nice to, to, to spread this collaboration to other centers. Because in my opinion, only one hospital is not, not too enough and we must think about broader this collaboration to other centers, not only in Poland, but I think other countries just on the borders, uh, we have a borders with Ukraine. And what I just say for a, uh, for an end, I might talk that one of the patients who has been transferred with Jorge uh, uh, team and our team uh, as well during a night from Lvov, he is already working uh, and he will be discharged uh, to at home uh, very very quickly. It, it's a good. It's a good uh, final point of our <laughs> of our collaboration. But I, I think that in, in, in the future it will be much more broader and we are thinking about uh, uh, collaboration to other centers. And uh, I think it, it must be because the influx of the refugees, it will be growing. And especially the problem of uh, refugees, it's a mental problem as well as a physical problem. And uh, one center and one group, even very, very uh, collaborative, is not enough. I don't know if Przemek uh, can speak to us, uh, but if... if no, I, has, uh... no, unfortunately. So, Przemek, if you allow me, I will, I will try to conduct this um, the discussion in the further way, because uh, from my point of view, a lot of interesting questions arrive. And uh, my, my question is also, because you are a gentleman working in the big international humanitarian organization. Uh, I had uh, last time a couple of meetings with also uh, active uh, humanitarian organizations who are working for United States government. And uh, from my point of view, we try to explain our partners who were ready to come to Poland and uh, bring the finances from United States, from US aid uh, point. And uh, they were discussing about the creating the, something like a refugee uh, camps. Uh, we try to explain them that the camps in Poland are a very bad uh, meaning and uh, yeah. it's not be possible to build uh, such solution, uh, especially uh, if it will be not in a city. So they rather should focus on building uh, some kind of uh, old sports um, uh, hall or uh, like it has been used by the Polish government uh, and not build uh, the tents, not build that kind of uh, solution because it will be not good to recognize. So this uh, the experience of uh, international organization. And of course, we haven't the crisis for the uh, almost uh, from the, the Second World War of such size uh, in Europe. And we are not maybe prepared on this. It is not Middle East. It is not Africa. Uh, we have to use some different manners. So uh, how you think it should be uh, managed and from your experience in the world? So if I if I may if I may comment on that, I think you know we need to look. You know, every every humanitarian crisis has different characteristics, and it very much depends on the type of uh, of uh, population and, and on the on the specific features 
of, uh, of, of the flow of refugees. In this case, we're talking about, and that's something, you know, because we are, and I myself have spent six weeks at the border in, uh, in around Medikap, Shemeshel, Sheshov, uh, Korchova, uh, we have seen that this is clearly a, a humanitarian refugee crisis of women, which are mothers and spouses and children. And also taking into account that uh, they are leaving behind their husbands and uh, fathers, which means it's not the kind of refugee that is planning to resettle as a family somewhere else in Europe. The long game of most of the people that have crossed the border is to come back to Ukraine once they can. And that's one of the reasons why most people are staying in Poland. They're staying in Poland because they want to be close to home so they can return as soon as they can. Now, that also is, represents a challenge in terms of how we organize both temporary resettlement, housing, which has been, you know, the generosity, as you mentioned, of so many Polish families that have opened the door, so many, incredible amount that have opened the doors to families and, uh, and you know, for how long that would last and uh, how much, you know, this can happen in that random way. Uh, also in terms of health issues in relation to, to 50% of children. So we are talking about m- millions of children, you know, at least, you know, two, more than 2 million children have crossed the only through Poland uh, into Europe. And I, and I agree with you, uh, Thomas, that I think there has to be some kind of like uh, more organized and systematic uh, uh, coalition of, uh, of organizations when I think, as Shai mentioned before, it, there, is, there is as much as we can do. We, you know, we, we have a very, we're a small hospital compared to Europe. You know, yeah. we are a very, ex, you know, a lot of expertise, a, a, a high motivation to help, to have our doctors come with a, with a volunteer spirit of helping. But, you know, with 100 doctors counting Lublin and a few others that we are bringing out from other parts of the world that are joining our delegation, you know, it's, a, it's, it's very nice that we are doing this for the long term. When you look at housing, when you look at health, when you look at education, there has to be a broader effort by not just Poland. Poland is the gate by European and probably not only Europeans, the same way that there is a coalition of people who care about this crisis around the world, who are helping militarily and uh, economically and in other ways. The humanitarian crisis is a global crisis that needs to be addressed in that way. I do believe that, that uh, and I'm very happy, for example, to be part of, uh, of a network with the workers organization, uh, with MSF, Medicine Sans Frontier, UNHCR, all these organizations, we sit regularly once a week, we review things, it's great. But still, you know, that's one one pillar of this kind of uh, model that we need to build. And again, as I said at the beginning, I will repeat that. It needs to happen yesterday because we are not learning the lessons for the next humanitarian crisis. We are in the middle of one that we have no idea how much it will still grow in numbers, in dimension, and even in surprises we don't know. Uh, yeah, I would, I would, uh, okay. I would comment uh, on what you're just saying. I think that the experience, if we can learn something from this crisis, is that what we are doing now with this kind of a, a interaction needs to be written in a playbook, needs to be able to, uh, to not do the effort of preparation again. And again, the relationship with the University of Lublin, Lublin was so fast, but that's not the reality. That's because Poland is so good. But in other crises, you don't have uh, uh, um, um, universities or hospitals like uh, Piotr immediately making themselves available. Or, or Alex, that is a YPO and past uh, uh, European chair of YPO as well, putting those efforts next to it. So a, a playbook, in a way, of this kind of PPP could be a very, very strong uh, take home in order to manage uh, next crises. Because there is only one thing certain, other crises will be there. Yeah. I just uh, uh, just add some uh, some new data about the numbers because it's a, it's a very important. Uh, uh, it's a day. It's an update from 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 yesterday. Uh, to Poland was entered 3.2 million people like a refugee, and uh, for several uh, days there was a negative influx. Let's say uh, there a lot of people like uh, like Jorge said previously is going back to Ukraine. 
I spoke with some of them what, what was of explanation. Okay, as, as Jorge said, the majority it's a woman with her children. And they, when the situation is a little bit stabilized uh, around, for example, uh, Kiev, they wanted to back to various, uh, to various homes. And I think that we must don't think about transfer a, a long, long hallway from, from, uh, from, uh, from Ukraine, this kind of people, the refugees, and rather is keep them around uh, just in Europe because they wanted to be very quickly back to the Ukraine. And I think what it's a very crucial, it's a, a settlement and housing. And I think there's a few solutions. First, in, uh, in uh, some schools, uh, for second, is some sanatoriums. Like in Poland, we have a lot, and uh, some of them are not uh, fulfilled. And of course, there are some other situation in, uh, in other countries. And I totally agree with Tomasz that uh, the camp is uh, not a good name and not a good solution for to, from this kind of patients. You agree with me. I think we must find a solution to, to settle these people for a couple of months. And the majority, I'm very sure, wanted to come back to their families to Ukraine. It's my personal... Uh, I, 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 fully, I fully agree. However, uh, because uh, Przemek mentioned it, I am um, active as a businessman, especially in HR area. One of my company, my investment, uh, is a company who is employing uh, 15,000 Ukrainians in Poland. So uh, we are pretty much... Uh, ready to, to say what's going on on the Polish job market. And we have to remember that for the last couple of years, more than 1.5 million Ukrainians were working already in Poland. They were on not permanent visa, they were coming here. So I also believe that it helped really uh, for Polish people to understand the culture, the, the direct contact and so on. Uh, however, uh, the people who left to Ukraine, it can be men, because we lost, as a Poland from the Polish labor market, almost 40% of men who are going to fight for their countries. Mm. And uh, I think it will somehow equalize. Some of the people cannot come back to Ukraine because they don't have place to come back. Think about the Mariupol, which is completely mm -hmm. destroyed. Think about Kharkov, where the 20 or 30 percent of the buildings are destroyed. It, it will take years, especially for the economy like Ukraine, which will be destroyed. Even with the financial help, they will not have proper uh, devices. They will not have proper uh, educated uh, people. It, it has to be done somehow for the probably period of two years that we should do something in Europe, in Poland. Maybe it will be not permanent, but maybe we should speak about the modular building, about the housing which can be replaced and built in Ukraine after these two years when the situation will become. So th this is the very important part Europe should be focused on because I'm afraid of that Polish government and the European government are very focused on the weapons now and on the artillery and all of this stuff, which is, of course, important for the success of Ukraine in the war. But at the end, we don't think in a long time perspective and this is what we for sure should do. And uh, th that's why I ask, uh, ask Jorge how we as entrepreneurs from Poland can be also listen on the international uh, level of um, uh, help on this organization because on our side on in our group there are four biggest polish business organization uh, which is um, the polish employers organization which is uh, leviathan also the second polish employers organization the corporate connection which has about 120 biggest polish entrepreneurs with the companies 500 million polish złotych more revenue so all of these people are there. We are ready to discuss. And believe me, everyone knows it. it. Government is not the right place to discuss directly when we are alone because they don't care usually. So we have to uh, use the power of this private uh, and uh, philanthropy organization to just give the message to all of the people who decide on the government levels. So I don't know, because we have, uh, I think, uh, closing to the end, or we have to, till 11, yes? So uh, I, I don't know, because the Przemek should run this uh, conversation. So I think we have last of the question. So uh, from my point of view, very important also. Do you think that uh, some kind of solution should be adopted by the United Europe and uh, Ukraine should have the fast track to join the United Europe? You know, you know, I, I prefer staying on the on the uh, humanitarian aspect. I'm not a political organization. 
And as such, okay. um, I, be I believe we need to focus on good deeds, help and support. And when some of us will be a prime minister or chair of the European Union, that will be his job or her job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. true. It's, the, the discussion is because I, I think in some level, as Professor said, we now need this United Europe help, especially on the healthcare system, what we are doing. And uh, in Poland, maybe it means to bring more people to Polish border. Maybe it needs to build more hospitals like you are doing. I, de and, I definitely uh, believe that uh, with the day of technology, Uh, since the majority of the need of uh, the families, basically women and kids, are of internal medicine or, 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 or generic yeah. medicine, telehealth is one of those things that needs to be very fastly implemented. We are active as a company uh, on that uh, in order to, uh, to provide services not only to the 2.2 million refugees in Poland, but you have refugees all over uh, Europe. Um, Italy has uh, 200,000 uh, and uh, Romania has a lot, etc. So we need to be able to uh, take over those borders that from the medicine point of view are not really a problem. And, and Piotr have mentioned something very important, the legal framework to make uh, this team work, right? Uh, the Israelis in Poland, but we have other European doctors. So today we are looking among those refugees, who of those are doctors, who of those are psychologists, in order to support the people outside of the country. Let's remember one thing, in terms of, um, of uh, the, the uh, PTSD and, and depression, the people that are outside of the country have 20% more uh, suffering rather than those who are staying in. And if you consider those who had uh, a parent remaining in the country while they are fleeing, the level of, uh, of uh, depression is even higher. So I'm, I'm really looking at this uh, disaster uh, and this crisis as long-term uh, with mental health uh, dramatic issues. Okay, so from my field, I tell you that the, the important point we have, we have observed as entrepreneurs and as employers, the people who are working here in Poland uh, very quickly adopt uh, to the place because they have something to do. They have money. They start to be independent and don't depend on their saving now. And it, it's our main effort now to teach them because the biggest problem is the language. And uh, mostly the people who came to Poland speak just Russian and Ukrainian. They don't speak uh, any languages. So we, we started a special program, and I think it could be also supported by a uh, humanitarian organization as a very important uh, for fast language training, like three weeks, you speak around 500 words, and it is enough to communicate in a workplace. And there are specialized courses for the special workplaces. So th this is the, the, the solution. Maybe that kind of solution can be for psychologists, I don't know, because for sure you are not able to give so many psychologists speaking Ukrainian or, language, or, or Russian. Yes. Okay. Uh, yeah, just, internal medicine, yes. medicine, yes, but not for psychology. No. Uh, just, just go ahead and write. Okay. Problem. Uh, Jorge, you want? Because no, I just, go ahead and then I make a couple uh, just, uh, just the last few words. Uh, first, I think that we must work in, I'm, I'm angry with uh, Shai, we must work in a little bit on a, on a private on a basis, not for a governmental basis, because uh, a governmental mm -hmm. basis is very, uh, very long, long timing and consuming a lot of energy. Uh, and the second, I think that on the eastern part of Poland and the hospital, we have a lot of uh, staff, a lot of doctors, a lot of nurses who are speaking uh, Russian, Russian or even uh, Ukrainian, as Jorge knows, because uh, few our uh, nurses speak Ukrainian. It's very helpful at the start. I'm agree with other languages. It will be helpful for a, for a, for a next uh, future. But for a start, <clears throat> it's very important. And uh, I think that our model could be spread to the other hospitals uh, uh, for, for on, on the borderline from, from the north to the south of the Ukraine border just to, to make first help. Second step, as Tomasz uh, said, uh, it's a housing and accommodation for longer term. And uh, I totally believe only in a teamwork, not for uh, just instruction for a government, do like that, like that, because I think it's, it's not work. Good. I totally believe in your teamwork. It's my my uh, my final uh, final uh, statement. So how okay. did you try to recruit people from Ukraine? Maybe because maybe there are across refugees also people who used to work in the yeah. medical yes. system. So yes, now we have a special law 
lex specialis, and uh, Przemek knows the, this uh, subject very well, which uh, is uh, possible to uh, to engage the uh, Ukrainian doctors uh, or nurses to Polish system, and after a few weeks working uh, uh, just to, to find how it works uh, with Polish doctors, it could be uh, like uh, work with Polish doctors and in a longer term to be uh, full, to have a full license to practice in Poland. It's the very shortest way uh, to practice. And I know that in several the uh, centers in Poland, uh, especially in, uh, in university centers, we have already few uh, few doctors from from Ukraine and many other nurses from Ukraine as well. So let, let me let me uh, Thomas. I want to take this. Uh, bridge uh, what uh, Piotr was saying and go back to the re- last question about you know the the European uh, fast track uh, uh, for for Ukraine and I think you know again I'm not going to go into the political uh, point about fast track or, or or slower track but I think definitely it, it, one of the characteristics is that is very clear in this humanitarian crisis is that this is a humanitarian crisis of European receiving Europeans so uh, Ukraine plays in Europe. And Ukraine has made that determination, and historically, that's the place where they belong. So it, it, it implies also for all of us who look at this humanitarian crisis as the millions of refugees to understand that this is a very, it's a relationship of those on this side, on this end of the, of the dialogue, those of us who want to help the people from Ukraine and the Ukrainians on the other side. We need to look at as peers. These are, they are suffering. It could be us going in the other direction. That was what we have to remember. And, and you know, and the level of uh, professionals and the level uh, of education and the level of, uh, of people that they might be destroyed emotionally and in many cases physically, and we deal with that. There are people that uh, should be partners in defining what are the solutions we find. And I think that's a very important point we need to remember. We need to create focus group discussions with Ukrainians who are now in Poland and in Europe to ask them, what kind of solutions we can provide and how you can be part of the solution because you know we should we should be very careful not to have the one of the one of the things that sometimes humanitarian organizations have is uh, in, in the, with the best of intentions and not consciously to be somehow patronizing and saying we know what's good for refugees and we will organize for you this is you know a, a, a crisis of high intellectual population from ukraine mostly that have something to say about what kind of solution we provide. And the last point I want to make, because I know we are getting close to the time, to cl- closing the, the, the panel, is that going back, Thomas, to what you were saying about the, the, the entrepreneurs and, and the group of, uh, of uh, Polish like mm, mm, you here in this panel, who, who have done so much to, to, to assist, to help. Part of the sustainable model that I recommend and suggest is that thinking about the model, even if it's temporary, and temporary can be for a couple of years, people with temporarily there, is to look at this as an opportunity for Poland, in this case, and for Europe at large, of how to integrate and absorb these populations by providing job, job uh, recruitment uh, opportunities for education, for integration, so that at the end, in areas of the country where this could add value, in parts of, the, uh, of Europe where this could really make a difference in, in, in labor shortage that uh, 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 Europe is is facing in, in the lack of uh, uh, young families in the working and people in the working force. There are many challenges. And maybe it's a moment that we look at this not as uh, something that we need to, to patch, you know, and find, you know how, to, how to close the bleeding, but also how we look at this as an opportunity for Europe to reshape Europe and create a better, uh, a better scenario uh, uh, for the short term, medium term, and probably the long term too. Yeah, I, I fully agree. So because we have one minute, so uh, in the area of Przemek, I'd like to thank all of you for the, being here and uh, sharing this all, the very important knowledge. Uh, I hope that uh, our joint uh, work and help will, will really be uh, good and enough for people who are now in Poland and who are coming to Poland and to Europe uh, for the next uh, couple of uh, months. Uh, and also the message to our Ukrainian friends, Yes, we are here and we are not stopping our work. We'll be there if you need us. Thank you so much, guys. Much appreciated. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye.